fighting games all that often. In fact, I've only reviewed three. Balls, which was Balls. Mortal Kombat, which is a game in this series that I don't really care for. And Super Smash Bros. Wii U. But today, I'm going to take a look at the latest entry in one of my favorite fighting game series of all time. Guilty Gear Excerpt Sign. My first introduction to fighting games was King of Fighters after watching the Fatal Fury anime, and my first fighting game that I bought was King of Fighters Dream Match 99 for the Dreamcast, followed by Marvel vs. Capcom for the same system. I wasn't too much into fighting games, but when I went to college in Tampa, Florida, and instantly befriended the first person I met in class as we had the same interests, we would hang out at a bowling alley on Fridays with a group of people that we would collect on our adventures in the city. The bowling alley had a very large arcade, and they had a Guilty Gear X machine. I would see it every time, but no one ever played it, and it was a very odd looking arcade machine. It wasn't until I watched the game and saw how impressive it was as the sprites were so detailed and everything was really fluid. It was the best looking fighting game that I've seen at the time, so I finally decided to drop a quarter into the machine and play. The first character I chose was Kai Kisk, because I thought he looked awesome and I would play it every chance that I got. And my friend Brian had a copy of Guilty Gear X2, Double X, XX, or whatever you want to call it, for the PlayStation 2. It was a rare game at the time, and I eventually found a copy, but it was only the disc. Then I later acquired the cover for the case, and then the instruction manual, and copied Brian's save data so I could have all the characters unlocked. I used Kai, Dizzy, and Justice the most. In in fact, the first and only time I beat Brian, who's pretty much a god at fighting games, was using Justice. And what preceded is a pretty funny story for a later date. To say Brian was mad would be an understatement of an understatement. Something happened that day and things were never quite the same again. His foot came this close to my face though. Excerpt Sign is the 16th game in the Guilty Gear series, 11th if you don't count the 5 updates to Guilty Gear X2. The idea came around 2008, but production didn't start until 2011. It didn't go full scale until 2012, finishing development in 2013. Now, from what I've heard, the reason why the Guilty Gear series went dormant and Blaze Blue became the spiritual successor is because of Sega and Sammy Entertainment merging into Sega Sammy Holdings. Because of the merger, Sega then owned the rights to Guilty Gear. Series creator Daisuke Ishiwatari said that while he couldn't say much, but did say that the rumors on the internet where Sega owns Guilty Gear were basically true. Eventually, Arc System Works got the rights back to the series. They decided to use the Unreal 3 engine because it was cheap and easy to use and edit and easier to port arcade versions of games to home systems. Due to the small budget, the roster was kept at a minimum so the characters could fit the plot, which is a continuation of the Devil May Cry action-styled game Guilty Gear 2 Overture, but plans to extend the roster are in the works. Ishiwatari also wanted to make sure that the game would be accessible to newcomers to the series, which is good because after the confusing as hell story that is X2, it's nice to see that they decided to make it easier to understand. The game's graphics are really good, and I'm glad they kept the anime style that the series is known for, and the characters are all 3D models, but they're animated in such a way that it looks like the older 2D sprite-based games, which upon first reveal I thought were sprite-based until I read further into it. The game retains the rock music that it's known for, although familiar music tracks are redone but are still just as awesome. The gameplay is pretty much like the Street Fighter games, although it's closer to the King of Fighters series, having four inputs instead of Street Fighter 6. But unlike King of Fighters, you have Punch, Kick, Slash, and Heavy Slash. If you played Street Fighter or King of Fighters, you'll be able to pick up and play Guilty Gear with no issues as the controls require you to use button combinations like quarter circle forward and an attack button. Additionally, this game feels like a Marvel vs. Capcom game where it's fast and frantic and you're able to go really high up into the air and perform dizzying air combos by using dust attacks that sweep your opponent high into the air. As you attack and take damage, a tension meter will fill, allowing you to perform overdrives which are special attacks. You can also perform an instant kill attack by hitting all four command buttons at once, then entering the appropriate command and if the attack lands, your opponent will be destroyed. When activated, the tension meter is replaced with a different version and any tension you build up will slowly drain. Once the meter is drained, you will start to lose health. And if you miss with the instant kill, you will no longer have access to the tension gauge and not be able to perform overdrives for the rest of the fight. You also have a burst meter which gets you out of combos and knocks your opponent back. An interesting thing is that there is a story mode, but you don't play it. You watch it, and it is pretty long too. But the only way to watch the whole story is to complete the arcade mode. The game does have downloadable content, but for the most part it's benign, mostly containing alternate colors for the characters that cost a dollar each or twelve dollars for all of them, and system voiceovers that are three dollars each or thirty-five for all of them. 
I don't mind this at all because it's optional and I prefer the default colors anyway. There are two downloadable characters and they're $8 each, which I think is a little too expensive for them. There's three if you decide to pay to unlock Sin instead of going through regular gameplay. The DLC is cross-buy, so if you have the PS3 version and then get the PS4 version later on, you'll still have them. The one thing that disappoints me about this game is the roster. Justice isn't playable, but more importantly, Dizzy, who makes an appearance in the game, and is also my favorite and best character, is not playable. Now, that would be grounds for a Bubsy 3D rating, but that wouldn't be fair, now would it? The game does have English voice acting, and in my experience, fighting games from Japan almost never have good English voices, with Namco fighting games being the exception. But I don't play Tekken and only played Soul Calibur 3, so don't take my word on that. But the King of Fighters Maximum Impact series has the absolute worst. But the voice acting in Guilty Gear Exert is actually pretty good. I had no issues with what I heard, and I enjoyed the voice acting, and the voices fit the characters pretty well. Although Bedman, while his voice works, I think it's more bad editing on that part, as sometimes he talks very quickly with no pauses in his sentences. Especially when there should be pauses, and I think he's supposed to be a parody of internet trolls too. Slayer is the only voice that doesn't fit. He's a vampire from Transylvania and has a Scottish accent. It's a good voice, and the actor is very talented, but it's just the wrong accent. One thing I'd like to point out, this game is on the PlayStation 4, it's displayed at a 1080p resolution, and runs at 60 frames per second. So this is a question to Ubisoft, Activision, EA, and a bunch of the other people in the so-called AAA development, which is a phrase that needs to disappear, and these are people who have a better chance of getting gonorrhea from a virgin than seeing this video anyway. How did a team of 25 people on a limited budget manage to accomplish this feat? How did they manage to push the boulder up the mountain while avoiding the giant crow that likes disemboweling people and when they got to the top, how did the boulder not roll down the other side? The only thing that disappoints me is the roster, consisting of very few characters that I actually like and lacking the ones that I do. I'm hoping Dizzy will be brought in as DLC, because I would buy that faster than amiibos fly off the shelves. I do plan on getting the other downloadable characters in the near future as I'd like to try out Elephant. I find that the characters who were deemed important to the story that were put in the game as playable to be a poor excuse. For example, Slayer is playable but only appears briefly, while Johnny, who has a bigger role, isn't playable. It's just very disappointing that out of the 30 or so playable characters the series has gained, they only chose 13 of those returning characters. There's no Biken, no Angie Mito, no Bridget, and more importantly, no Dizzy. Yeah, I know I brought that up a couple of times already, but that shows you just how much it pisses me off that there's no playable Dizzy. Despite the lack of a playable Dizzy, I'm happy to see that Guilty Gear has made a return to its fighting game roots, and stayed true to the series style of gameplay. Unfortunately for you Xbox owners, this game is only on the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 or the arcade. The series has never really been on Xbox systems. The series has never really been on Xbox systems. With Guilty Gear X2 Reload being on the original Xbox due to the added online functionality, and Guilty Gear 2 Overture on the 360, which is a game that I couldn't find when it was released and still can't find it. If you ever find a copy of a Guilty Gear game, any Guilty Gear game, I suggest that you jump on it because the Guilty Gear games are rare. But stay away from Guilty Gear Asuka. It's the only bad game in the series. I really enjoyed Guilty Gear Excerpt Sign, and if you got a PlayStation 3 or 4, you should definitely buy it. It'll get the Gift of God score once Dizzy is a playable character. Until then, it's lucky that it's not getting the Bubsy 3D rating.